I'm very excited to chat with you today. Even more excited to have you in town November 27th. You're going to be in Portland Cross Insurance Arena for the WWE Holiday Super Show Tour. Have you ever been up to Maine before, Braun? I have. I actually love Maine. Um, there's a there's a little spot. I can't remember exactly which town it's in. We'd always run the Portland area and stuff like that. There's a little restaurant. I'll give them a plug. The yeah. Red Barn Inn. It is the best lobster roll I've ever had. It's one of my favorite. That's what I said. I love Maine, especially like it's going to be a little colder in December. I really love it up there in the fall. The, 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 the leaf change, everything is so beautiful. It's such an unbelievable state, and I'm really looking forward to getting back. I haven't been to Maine in I think three years, so get ready. The monster's coming. He's coming. It's been too long, and I'm sure the Red Barn will appreciate that. That's awesome. You know it's stuck with you for a reason, so you got to get a lobster roll sometime soon. I want to talk all about the tour with you, Braun, but before we get into that, I'd love to get to know you a little bit. Can you tell me how you got into wrestling? All right, so let's give you the, 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 the short version. So, um... 2012, let's, we'll start with 2011, I was North America's strongest man. I used to compete in World's Strongest Man competition. So 2011, I was North America's strongest man. 2012, I won the Arnold Amateur World Championship. And then uh, 2012, uh, I was an alternate for World's Strongest Man in Los Angeles that year, and WWE was there recruiting. Um, uh, I, at the time, became good friends with Mark Henry, who was another fellow strongman competitor, the, the uh, inaugural Arnold Classic strongman winner. So we had formed a good relationship outside of the wrestling industry. Um, Mark put his name on the line, got me an opportunity to come down to the FCW building at the time in Tampa, Florida for a tryout. Um, WWE liked what they saw. They offered me a developmental contract. I was the inaugural class in the WWE Performance Center. I am the first WWE superstar to come into wwe with zero wrestling experience be trained at the wwe performance center and make it to the main roster and now here we are going on 10 years later um this coming july will be 10 years uh, with the company with a little break in there um but yeah it's just been kind of uh, like trying to lasso a tornado and hold on for dear life it's been such an unbelievable ride and uh i've said a couple times in other interviews my time away from the company was was a, a very interesting time as well it allowed me to take a step back and realize holy cow all this stuff that i'd done in the, the six years of being on tv i had won every title except one that wwe had to offer i'd wrestled every superstar i'd main evented every pay-per-view i sold out every building we'd been into in the world and it was nice to take a step back but now the monster his home where he belongs yeah. ramping things up leading into this holiday tour i couldn't be more excited i mean how much more fitting are these red skinny jeans that i'm wearing gonna be than coming in looking like a jacked young chris kringle on the holiday tour <laughs> i love that Ron. if you didn't go down this wrestling path what do you think you would be doing for a career I don't know. Maybe still picking up cars and giant rocks and pulling yeah. airplanes. Um, also, probably still mechanicing. I'm I'm still very active in the automotive industry. Um, I love race cars. I got a couple of race cars myself. And you know, honestly, I don't know. I'm one of those people that I don't really have per se of an end goal. I enjoy the walk, the walk of life and anything that comes across my path. Life is about experiences. Why not experience as many things as you possibly can? And that's one of the amazing things with being a WWE superstar is being able to travel around the world and see so many amazing things, meet so many amazing people and do so many amazing things. And we're just getting started. I signed a, a, a nice lengthy contract again with WWE. So you're going to have to see this ugly mug on your TV for the foreseeable future. So get ready to take the ride with me. I I love it. Good for you. And I really love your perspective. It's all about the journey, right? For Absolutely. Sure. That's what I said. The, I, I've, I've learned as I, I hate aging myself, but as I creep up closer to 40, it's like I said, the more and more things you can experience and do in life. Uh, at the end of the day, I think the only thing you take with you are your memories. So I'm going to make as many of them as I possibly can. Oh, that's the best outlook to have right there, Bron. Amazing. What does a normal day in your life look like? Because I feel like there's a lot of exercise in there. I don't think anything per se is normal for me. Yeah. Um, what it, <laughs> it's all, yeah, that's just saying. So, like, so we'll take my normal, so we'll take my normal off day when I'm uh, off the road. Uh, 
sometimes I try to sleep in. It doesn't usually happen too much. I have a very young, rambunctious uh, American XL bully. She's 18 months old and she's 105 pounds and she doesn't let dad sleep in too much. <laughs> so she, she, she's wake up, dad, let's go play. I need to run. I got energy. So she, she keeps me very busy. So it works out great. The first thing I do every morning, I wake up and I do around an hour of fasted cardio. So um, I've learned with how my body type is that I burn a lot more calories when I trick my body in the morning to thinking that I've eaten. So I wake up and I'll drink it like 20 ounces of water. And that tricks my body into thinking that I have food in my stomach. So it starts my metabolism, but there's no calories in there for it to actually digest. So I'm burning calories on my body. So I get out and go for a nice brisk walk with Bella in the morning. Mm -hmm. Then I get back and then I'll have a nice um, slow digesting carbohydrate like oats or something like that. I've, I've been really big on buckwheat lately. So I went to the store the other day and I just was rummaging through the, 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 the dried cereal aisle and I came across buckwheat and I just remembered like buckwheat pancakes when I was a kid and I really like that so i tried and actually wow i was really impressed with it. so that's something that i've added in so i'll do um usually i do a protein powder for my first meal so i'll do 50 grams of, of like a whey isolate protein and around 150 grams of that buckwheat or oats or something like that and then i'll sit around for a little bit go through mail what i need to do and then i head to the gym and that's where i start packing more bricks on this meat castle that i am get in there get a train session in um and yeah, every, every day that's, I try to get in the gym every day and it all depends on how my body's feeling, whether I'm sore from wrestling, sore from training, tired, whatnot. It's really important that I've learned as, as I'm getting older, there I am aging myself, that I have to listen to my body. So I get in there, I get my training done, usually around an hour to an hour and a half of training. Then right away, again, another meal. So usually I eat around seven to eight meals a day. And uh, usually I consume about six to seven pounds of meat a day between cooked beef, chicken, or fish, and around four pounds of rice um, along with that. So I time those meals out about every two and a half hours. So I'm pretty much just a cow, and I just graze all day long. <laughs> so like people laugh because I carry a fanny pack and stuff like that, and that's where I keep I keep snacks in it because, like I said, uh, I have a very high metabolism. I'm running around right now at around 335, 340 pounds, sitting around 10% body fat, and, and it's something that's been fun. And, and people have seen over my career with WWE, when I came in, I was like four, I was legit. 400 pounds uh the heaviest i ever was competing in strongman was 418 pounds so transitioning from strongman into wrestling where the strongman world i only needed to be able to you know maximize cardiovascular for 90 seconds now stepping into wwe where we're going out there and i'm having wrestling matches up to 45 minutes long it's a totally different cardio that my body had to be reacclimated to so in my time away with wwe in the last year that was something that i really focused on as adam share as the as the man behind braun Strowman doing as much as I possibly could to better that. Now coming back, WWE, Braun Strowman is back. I think I've brought the best possible package that I can to the show, to, you know, to go out there and do what we do as a company, and that's put smiles on people's faces. And some some people just love big, sweaty men. <laughs> and ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> that's a beautiful thing, Braun. You have, like you mentioned earlier, had already so many accomplishments. I'm curious, out of all of those, which are you proudest of? Oh man, there's see, honestly, it's, it's hard to really narrow it down to anything. I love what I do. I've said this time and time again, I truly believe I was put on this earth to be a WWE superstar. So any opportunity that the company gives me to go out there and represent, you know, I take that as a blessing, you know, uh, opportunities don't always come. And when they do, it's so important to make the most out of them. And that's what I try to do. Good, bad, or ugly, whatever I'm given that day as a script to go out there and perform, I try to make the best of it as I possibly can. Because at the end of the day, our fans spend their hard earned money. They take their time time to come out and watch what we do and perform and it's an opportunity for us to take them on a, on a journey you know and on this emotional journey and get them to take their mind off of what's going on in their day-to-day -day life and that's the cool thing about with what wwe is and what our locker room is you know at the end of the day i like, I like to describe wrestling as ice cream everybody likes ice cream i don't care you're a liar if you say you know i like ice cream it's a matter of what flavor ice cream you like and wwe does such a good job of having that diversity in the locker locker room every walk of life that you could imagine whatever you believe in whatever you want to see we have it tune in and check it out if you've never been to one of our live shows i promise you we will hook you you will become a fan if you're on the fence take the leap take that step and i promise you let us do our job and turn you into one of the wwe universe
I'm so glad you mentioned that, Braun, because of course, on the 27th of this month, you're going to be in our neck of the woods in Portland for this tour. For anyone who has never been to a WWE live show, what can they expect to see? A a excitement, energy, you know, there's something special about the WWE universe, not only as a performer, but as a fan. I've been on both sides of the guardrail, sitting out there with the fan. That energy is so contagious. You get caught up, and I like to use this term, getting lost in the sauce. Yes. That at the end of the day, it is a family fun oriented environment. And it's so awesome to go out and see the WWE universe having fun, smiling, partaking, chanting, cheering, booing, all of that. At the end of the day, it's a show, and we do such an amazing job of going out there and entertaining. I'm so proud of our locker room. It is so unbelievably talented from top to bottom. There's so many great men and women in our locker room that go out there and put their bodies on the line for the name of entertainment, and it's fun. And that's why I said, take the, take the dive. Come and get lost in the sauce. Have fun. Enjoy it with us. I love that. And there is a great roster on this tour. Who are you most excited to be on the road with? Uh, everybody it's just good to be home like i said it's such a familyhood brotherhood sisterhood in the locker room the locker room right now is so amazing where i touched the touch on that talent and you know we have Every, every walk of life and it's so awesome to see the different styles that we have to offer that's what I said we've got the little guys that can do all the crazy flips we've got the big monsters like me and everything in between it is such a top to bottom just well put together show I always got to give the, the nod to the powers to be that design the card that, that that plan everything out because they do such an amazing job to, to we run a two if we try to run a two hour and 45 minute show when we do our premium live events which what this is going to be on our holiday tour and the thing is with these shows is we are resting solely for the fans in the building so we're more interactive with the fans at these shows where if you say we're on uh, friday night smackdown at the end of the day we're, that's our tv show so a lot of the stuff is projected mainly for that camera to get to our big audience at home so it's such more of an intimate setting because we have fun and interact with the fans and i love it that's what i said getting out there having fun with the fans getting them to cheer getting them to chant getting them to boo the bad guys that's at the end of the day that's what it's all about Oh, I love to hear that, Braun. That makes me want to go even more because I've never been to a live WWE show, but that's so interesting to hear that perspective is you are performing for the cameras in those settings, but this is just for the intimate crowd there. That's really cool. That's what I said. What, what, a, what a better way to ring in the holidays than bring your family out and have some fun with WWE. Hell yeah, Bron. I'm sure you're a guy who gets spotted out in public by fans, too, because I sense that. Every, every once in a while. Yeah, I, I think noticed. you're hard to miss in a crowd, maybe. <laughs> Do you have any fan interactions that stick out in your head that were just the best? Oh, man, there, there's so many amazing. That's what... <laughs> I've been very blessed to do make a wishes and stuff like that. And, and those are some of the most important times of my life that I've ever been to, to see some of these kids and what they've gone through and how they lean on us as WWE superstars, how they're we're real life heroes of them. And I see these stories and hear these stories that parents have shared with me with their kids that are going to have surgery and stuff like that. And they listen to my entrance music. They hold my action figure while they're put under anesthesia. And that's something so powerful that, a lot of people don't realize it comes along with this job. And, and the saying with great power comes great responsibility. And that's the thing that they always, that old saying of never meet your heroes. I hate that. I want everybody that meets me to go, man, Braun Strowman is everything that I thought he was going to be and more. So that's what I said. It's so very special to us to be able to be able to interact with our fans and things like that, the meet and greets, all that stuff. Cause at the end of the day, without our fans, there is no Braun Strowman. Right, totally. That is so beautiful. Really great that you work with Make-A-Wish on that. That's so awesome. What advice would you give to anyone looking to maybe take a similar career path as you wants to be a future WWE star? Oh, man. Uh, first and foremost, do your school. Go to school. Uh, that's what I said. I, I, I'm a big, also, I, I grew up in the trade industry as a mechanic and things like that. Wrestling is one, it's a very, very dangerous sport. Um, there freak accidents happen and you never know when things can end. Um, so it's always nice knowing that you have something to fall back on it for one, but two, being a WWE superstar coming into wrestling, it's about having fun. 
it's such a fun job. And I tell people that learn, find a school that you want to go to, that you want to train in. But the most important thing is make sure you're having fun because if you're not find a different school, this is supposed to be the most fun job on earth. Cause at the end of the day, we're all a bunch of kids going out there and fighting each other in our underwear. And let's be yeah. real. That's fun. And that's what we love about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, Bron. I have a fan question for you, if you don't mind here. We got All Alex right. Brown Pond. He wants to know, who is tougher of the two that you've fought, Big Show or Omos? Ooh. Neither one or no slouch, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> both are very – one – what specimens of humanity? I mean, let's be for real. When you talk about me, six foot eight, 335, 340 pounds, both of these gentlemen make me look like a child. And I, some of my favorite matches I've ever had in my career were the ones that I had with Big Show and stuff like that. I learned so much with him when I came in being a young boy green and stuff like that is one of the terms that we use in uh, the wrestling industry. And that's being inexperienced. So being able to get in there with such a legend, a, a, a gentleman that's been in the industry and such a focal point of the industry for the last 30 years, um, just being able to step underneath that learning tree and let some of that knowledge fall down on me. And now that, you know, I'm kind of in his position and now it's my turn to bestow some of that knowledge upon. And I had the opportunity to, to step in the ring with giant Omos in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, just a couple weeks ago um, at crown jewel. And my goodness, um, I don't think anyone's ever really whooped my butt like that before. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've never, never been put into a hole, you know, that fast. And he's such a large human being. And I, I kind of underestimated how big and how strong he was. Cause let's be real. I'm usually the big strong guy. And there's that saying, there's always somebody bigger and badder out there. Well, he's clearly bigger, but I prove to the world that I'm badder. Yeah, you are Ron. <laughs> I love that. Well, last, but certainly not least for you. Yeah, here in the state of Maine, our state motto is the way life should be. So I want to know, according to you, what is the way life should be? Uh, I, this is this is one of my mantras in life. The way life should be. Hang on, we got some guy making a bunch of noise in his car out here. <laughs> The way life should be, in my opinion, do what makes you happy as long as you don't take someone else's happiness away. Perfect. I love that. Simple, but more people should do that. <laughs> For sure, Bron. Thank you so, so much. We can't wait to have you in town on the 27th. I can't wait to come back. Lobster rolls on me if you run into me yes. at the Red Barn. <laughs> Amazing. I'm sure they're excited to see you too, Bron. And until we meet again, thank you so much for your time. Awesome. Hopefully I see you at the show. Come. Yes. You got to come. If you've never yes. been to one, you better be there. Yes, I will be there loud and proud. <laughs> Amazing, I love Ron. it. I love you it. I love care. it. <laughs> thank you, dear. Very nice to talk to you.